Bud's game or more like Groundhog Day, boys. Another big loss after celebrating a beautiful life of Danny Frawley. Um, we're all a bit flat in here after the loss. This has a massive impact on us for the rest of the year. It's one that we put in the book as a win and a massive upset has come out and it looks like to us that we've got a bit of a bogey team on our hands. Uh, without <laughs> further ado, Jake, how are you feeling? Ooh. <laughs> how am I feeling is the question, isn't it, boys? Yes. Uneasy. Uneasy. Feeling uneasy. Yes. Don't yeah. know what's around the corner. It's very well put. Very yeah. well put. Mm. Very calm and composed there, Marshy. <laughs> Are you as calm and composed as the Godfather? Oh, uh, yep, yep, lads and listeners. Um, oh, that was a hard one to digest. Yep. That was, you know, all the Metamucil, all brand dates. Oh, it's going to take a lot to purge Friday night from our systems because I, I thought it's Monday night. We're recording on a Monday night. Typically after, a, 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 like the Cairns one, for example, I was okay come when we mm. recorded. I'm still... I think I, I'm back to being a bit pissed off about the matter. I, I was I, I was quite shocked. We went through the, the stages of grief with this game. <laughs> and I don't know. There's denial. There's all of them. But I, I don't know. Saturday morning, I went to go get a coffee with a Didi. And it was fucking cold, as it always is in Melbourne at this time of year. Wearing my Saints beanie and we're waiting for our coffee and this Essendon fella comes up and he just wants to chat. Like, he wasn't giving us any grief, mm. but he was just talking about the game. And then I'm like, oh, I really don't want to talk Saints footy. So I went, you see this beanie I got on my head? Mm -hmm. I went to Rebel Sport later on that day oh, and no, I got myself didn't. a non-Saints beanie because I, I don't have a non-Saints beanie. <laughs> I have always lose them. Um, I hope I don't lose this one because St Kilda did not deserve me on the weekend. Oof. They did not deserve that's me. A, that's a big call for him. Yeah. Oh, you know, the, the, so my phone died at about ha at half time of the Zebras game mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, I'm just leaving my phone dead for the rest of the weekend. And it was nice. We just got back to just not yeah, just getting away from Saints footy for a day or two, but... That's Saints footy, isn't it? Like, I, I, yeah. I know, I, I'm sorry, I'm going on a little bit longer here. No, but no, no, keep going. Like, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I know I was coming out and saying that you were going to do Essendon by 75, uh. two centimetre Peter's not going to do anything. But I tell you what, boys, I'm I, I'm good at a few things. And one of those things that I'm good at is telling a little red, white and black lie because I wasn't surprised by Friday night. No. Nah. That was it. that played out exactly how internally I really felt uh, heading into it, mm. but you know, <laughs> that's that's Saints for you. Yeah. Um, Joyce, what did you think of it? Uh, it was it was one of the more frustrating games of football I've sat through. Um, just seeing they third bottom, yeah, and they didn't move from third bottom even after a win. So that just states to you that win to Essendon for their season means f all. Mm. Means nothing. Yeah. They're still going to get the number three draft pick. You know, it's nothing. They could afford to win that. They had nothing to lose. And we had everything to lose. And just like when we usually do, when we have everything to lose, we do. Yeah, We're a pack of it. losers. So <laughs> consistent. <laughs> we are consistent, if not anything. Oh, so, shit. Yep. Yeah, it was just, it, it was majorly disappointing. Right. Um,. I, I sat there with my, my Essendon mate and he was just like, you know, oh, don't worry, you guys will come back. You guys will come back. And then uh, we had our five minutes in the in the third quarter where we score, uh, we, we, we levelled the scores and uh, then that was it. We decided to pack up and go home after that. We'd eaten our lunch. It was time to go back to class and we got schooled mm -hmm. big well, we, time. Were you boys convinced at all when we broke even and we kicked those five goals quickly? Because no. even then... Like, uh, my mate, my bomber mate, he was looking at me. My, uh, Jess was looking at me because usually I'm very emotional. I get the wave of excitement, you know? And I was just sitting there like, okay, cool. One goal, two goal, three goal, four goal, five. Okay. But I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah. Like, the goals didn't come the way that, like, the Geelong wave came. 
You know, it was yeah. hard work. It was a completely different run of goals. It was a 50-metre penalty. Uh, I think there was a free kick to Higgins or something. Yeah. Uh, turnover from Essen. I'm like, and none like, of pa- the- And Paddy got his shot back again. Like, yeah, Paddy yeah. got his shot back again. I'm like- But he missed that. Oh, yeah, none- sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, none of that was generated by any changes that were made at halftime. No. I was like, no. we're just capitalising on a bit of down form from the Bombers, but if they fix it up, they'll get on a run again and guess- Guess what bloody happened? Yeah. They got a run. I think the main thing for me watching, I mean, emotionally it's tough <laughs> to sit through that. <laughs> um, but it's it's incredibly frustrating to see that we tried to continue chains through the corridor of the ground and that, look, we tried a new approach in the first quarter, which I wasn't too mad about. We were trying to hit up the lead. And I've been calling for that all year. Mm. But unfortunately, that kind of played more into Essendon's hands. Yep. They, they came out one-on-one. I watched them from a kick-out. We were taking the kick-out. No zone. It was all man-on-man. And the only way that you can break away from a man-on-man setup is to run and outplay your player. Yeah, just work yeah. hard. And we're not used to it. No. Nah. We're used to getting done on zones. Were we playing a zone? Because yes. they were everywhere. Yeah, and you know what happens when you start to when turnovers happen, and yeah. you're suddenly man on man, and you go, "Oh shit, I need to play, be in a position." Everyone frees up. Yeah, yeah. They had so many numbers. Yeah, it was a joke. Like there was that goal that Shield basically was running into an open goal. And I think he shanked his kick. Yeah. But there were still four of them basically on the edge of the goal square. They yeah. had so much time to make a mistake, fumble, yeah. then collect the ball and still snap the goal. I'm like, Well, that's what right. The like, hell? They they look crap going forward, but yeah. they were still able to generate scores. And the fact that we just turn over. How many times in that first quarter we just kicked it down Peter's throat when we're trying to rebound? Yeah. We just direct turnover. Yeah. And it was almost like we we're like imploring them to kick a goal. Yeah, and like Jade Gresham, like just he had a he had a pretty good game, mm. but the writing was on the wall. Our intensity was so shit, and I put that down to it being Spud's game, a big game, games that we typically it takes us a while to to break in. So I'm like, all right, I'll cut him some slack. But yeah. dead set, when we were do- those stupid switches, oh, just we, sinks. We, Sinks and we're just trying to generate things that weren't there. Mm. And we, but the first five, ten minutes, we showed Essendon no respect. No, nah. none. And like, you know, the amount of like Gresham would get the ball and he did it all game, but he would take a mark and then he would just it, it, it would stop, like, as if oh. he was the one that's on the mark doing the stand. Mm. He would stand as soon as he marks it, like a netballer. And then not go back and then just like play on straight away. So pressure. He's under the pump. And he did it all game. And even like when he he could have had a shot at goal. Mm. Yeah. He plays on. Like, you know, go back. You're kicking at 35 directly in front. Yeah. But that sort of play just filtered to the rest of the team. And I was going to say, that's something that Seb Ross is usually guilty of. Yeah. To to take a mark and just stand there looking defensive. Mm. Looking at like looking at Essendon's forward line and waiting for someone to run past. Yeah, it's like boys, a bit of urgency, a bit of get back off your mark, look at your options, and then trust. But that's on your where boot. that's where it's an oxymoron because by doing that, the, it's suggesting that they want to be really proactive and just go. Yeah, but the the smart thing to do is you take your mark and you just go back. Just give go, yourself some exactly space. Right, yeah. Give yourself some space because otherwise you got your the bloke standing on the mark yeah, two meters in front of you, yeah. and then you, you then you, you play on and they're like, oh sweet I just have to take one step and I'm already able to pressure them. Yeah, and it happened all game and it was just dumb football. Yeah, we played dumb football the whole night. Yeah, but, and there was no change in chemistry whatsoever nah. across mm. the ground. Essendon killed us on their spread. Yeah. They they showed us what switching the ball means. And you know what switching the ball means? Means a lot of running without effort. Uh, r- running without reward. Yeah. It's, it's more the whole team, isn't it? That's exactly we, right. They, we their whole team played well. Yeah. 
their whole team played well. It's because they played team orientated football. It didn't matter who got that was, the ball. Do you reckon that was the most selfish game of football our club has played this year? Absolutely. This year, it was a it was a clone of last year, wasn't it? Yeah. It was, it was a clone. I think there were patches that were worse. Yeah. They kicked fifteen seventeen. Yeah, this and could have been a seventy point loss again. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about how many inside fifties we have conceded over the past two weeks. One hundred and twenty two, sixty one in the last two weeks, mm. forty one and forty five collectively for us. So yep. it's nearly forty odd differential in two games. Yeah, that is a, being absolutely hammered from pillar to post in the yep. middle. And I, th- I think the defender's getting sick of it. I think we yeah. broke even in the clearances. In the first ten minutes of the first quarter, we were mm. down. Guess what the clearances were? 9-1 our way. Right, yeah. yeah. I saw that. I'm like, okay, it's 10-0 on the scoreboard, but we're getting the clearances. Right. We'll get the goals. It never happened. What do our clearances do? This has yeah. been a massive issue for us all year. We get clearances, but to no avail. They go out uh, wide to the wings, wings and just trickle over the line, don't we they? We have not one good ball user by foot in the guts, uh, it seems. Yeah, like, but gre- you don't need to be a good ball user. You just need to get yourself into the space to get it forward. Steel's well, the only one. Well, you know, yeah. like, but you can, uh, you don't have to be a good ball user, but you can at least kick it to advantage. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, yeah. kick it, we, we don't do it. How many inside 50s do we get from our clearances? Two a game if we're yeah. lucky. Yeah. They got so many, and, and teams do it to us constantly. They manage to clog us up, create a wall within that centre circle so we can't get by. Yeah. Hmm. And I think it just comes down to team footy. Are you putting the shepherd on for your mate? Are you letting Jonesy run through and you're laying that tough bump so he can? Yeah. Because God knows, that, that's what happens to us. Once, once that ball hits the ground... Whoever's closest from the other team goes and gets that footy. And if you reckon you can make space to get an inside 50, you run forward and then handball out the back. Yeah. Mm. But for some reason, we just don't have that that glue. We're not not glued together. There's no synergy in the midfield. Our midfield has been absolutely appalling since coming back. Well, I think some people may have underestimated how important players like D-Mac and Mason Wood... Uh, talk, on those let's, wings. Let's, let's talk about D-Mac. So D-Mac, first of all, he's that player, isn't he? He does the selfless stuff. Yeah. He knows when to go and when to wait. He can also go forward and kick a goal, and he's great in the air. And the biggest thing, he's got endurance. Yeah. He won't stop running and spreading, yep. and he creates that outlet from the back line or the forward line. He does it both ways. I think with Mason Wood as well. Yeah. I think um, he had a very poor game last week. But fun fact with him, we're 14 wins and... Fourteen wins and seven losses. Without him, we're three wins and like ten losses. Yeah, we are so much better with D Mac and Wood in the team than without. I People think don't that, un- understand cause, that. Well, because like one of the things that Wood does is that he marks the football and he, that he does. straight away takes off the pressure. And same, same with D Mac as well. And D Mac, yeah, yeah. yeah D Mac's very good overhead. Yeah. And they yeah. get back quickly, don't they? When Wood yeah. marks it, how quick is he to run five, ten meters back? Yeah. He does a lot of the basics, apart from kicking. Sometimes, yeah. he does a lot of the basics really well. Yeah. He's a very team focused player. I think that another thing that we need to focus on as well as a team, we've been taken to physically. Mm. Now, yeah. D Mac is. They talk about spiritual leaders in football, right? They talk about people that that do the on-field efforts and the off-field efforts that everyone can, you know, look up to without having a title. D-Mac is that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is not afraid to put his body on the line for his jumper and for his teammates. He goes in and under hard. He crashes through packs. He takes big marks. He goes hard. He goes absolutely bunter at everything. Yeah, that is that is that is D-Mac encapsulated, and people love seeing it, and they follow by example. That's right, and he breaks tackles. And yeah, like, the, I would pay money. <laughs> I don't know. Well, is it, just Zach Jones. I don't think he's broken a tackle in his life. Every yeah. time he gets the ball, he's just running in straight lines. He gets tackled. You know, rarely does he break a tackle. Mason Woods very evasive. Mm. So is um, so is Dmac, mm. but oh, Zachy Jones sometimes, uh, oh, th- and that's a massive call. I'm sure he's broken plenty of tackles, yeah. but on the weekends he, he just he had no space. And whether that's him calling for the pill in the wrong spots, yeah, or you know 
players not putting on blocks for him or, you know, helping each other out mm. or maybe a combination of all of the above. But that, that to me, that, that was driving me insane, the amount of times he would just get it and then, bang, just get wrapped up. Easy peasy. Yeah. Right? And, and it doesn't get it out. That tells you from the clearance, though. They, they, do, they did the same thing on Friday night that they did to us last year. Mm. Two out the back of the contest. Yeah. You know, so they can f- tunnel the ball out so they can have that quarterback and Bob's your uncle, the field's in front of you, pick your target. We've got hard runners everywhere. And if we get the ball, there's a wall there. Yeah. Mm. So where's the equality? Where's where where do we bring two players up to that contest to make it harder for them? You know, for some reason we just have such faith in our midfield to not pull those sorts of things. And yeah. the biggest concern for me, there's a lot of blokes out there that have played a lot of footy. Yeah, there's a lot of blokes out there that have played a lot of footy. Sometimes you can't wait for the coach to tell you. Exactly. That, that was That's probably our most leadership. That was yeah. our most experienced midfield. I think we've fielded for the year because Windhager didn't play. It was Jones, didn't play. Um, Clark was back, Jones, Billings. Yeah, so yeah. I dare say that would back. probably be our most experienced, you know. Team. Yeah. For the year. It, yeah, like you take, you know, Jack Steele aside. Yeah. Like Joyce, you said, they're all very experienced players and Brad Crouch has taken a step back a little bit. Yeah. They all have. Yeah. I just find it so hard to believe that the midfield isn't working as well as it should be under Brett Ratton. Mm. He was the number one clearance player in the 90s. He's He's got the record for the most clearances in, mat, in a match. Well, like you said, the clearances aren't the problem. It's what we do with it when we get that set clearance. Yeah, but clearance. That's, what, that's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, because he, he, he was one of those players that was able to burst away yeah. and get an inside 50 from a yeah, set yeah. clearance. We, we're, not, we're not flagging that both our rucks were pretty average as well. I and was, usually, that, that, I was just going to say that, that. That does paper over the cracks. Like when the mids are down, yeah. but Roe and Patty are actually rucking and getting forward. Yeah. It makes us look more dominant in the middle than what we are. Yeah. They were both beaten on the weekend. Yeah. When, yeah. when was the Marshall, last time? Both, Marshall's a big worry. Both lost their ruck battles. Yeah. To Draper and to Phillips, Phillips I believe. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, look, Draper's a gun and he's going to be probably the best ruck- ruckman for the next 10 years. I've watched a lot of him and I can see why. We were after him. Yeah. We were offering him some big money for a bloke that has never played an AFL game. So he's, he's going to be an absolutely ripping ruckman for the next 10 years. But with Francis and whatnot, he's just a bit of a roadblock. Mm. You know, he's just a big unit. But I just... That... that, that but Marshall doesn't look right. No, no he he's not. He looks he's like not he's he, yeah. yeah, he's he, not fit. I would have played Heath or just play Campbell. Yeah, could have just rested Rowe. Now we've got the big block of four games. Yeah, you know, with four good teams, some of them with good rucks. Yeah, you can't afford to rest Marshall this week or in the next month. Yeah, this yeah. was the week to do it. Yeah, yeah, you can't rest either of them. No, because like, Paddy, yeah, he looks like he needs a chop out. Yeah, um, and yeah, Campbell's form. Well, you, you you take a you know a ninety percent fit Campbell over a sixty percent Marshall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know? and Campbell's he's putting the work in at Sandy. He's playing good games. Well, that's getting right. a lot of the ball. Yeah. If, he, goals. if he'd be playing shit down there, then you can see yeah. why they're a bit reticent to bring him in. But he's, he's been playing well. Yeah. He's in form. Mm. So there's a few question marks. Yeah. None more so than the form of Dan Butler. Oh. Now I just want to go back to the second quarter. Yeah. Where he gets the ball uh, and prime Dan Butler of 2020 uh, gets the ball yeah. and within a second it's on his boot yep. and it's going over the umpire's head. Hmm. No, he gets it and then he hesitates and then he runs an arc around the defender, handballs it. On his gets knees. It back, on his knees, gets it back yeah. and then snaps it. I nearly threw the up. Goal. I nearly threw up yeah. watching that. That was to me close to the worst moment of the game. <laughs> it was. Easy. Apart from the sinks going backwards and yeah. turning over the goal, which is very unlike sinks. Yeah. yeah. That to me was like, what the hell? Like that that set the tone for me for the oh, day. Oh, that was yeah. so flaccid. Yeah. Yeah. Like the rest of the, uh, and his counterpart, Jack Higgins, I thought the second worst part yeah. was when he's running into, he gets the ball um, and at the end of it, he's got King stand by himself. Mm. It's just an over the top. Oh, yeah. And then you had Marshall, and then he was just in two minds and just hits the turf between them. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are you sure that there was one where Butler oh, that did grubber. that? Yeah. There was one that Butler did that. 
yeah, on my yeah. side on the 50 arc. He yeah. was a player over the back as well. So yeah. what does that tell you, though? What does it tell you about these players? That's I think that's what everyone at St Kilda is trying to figure out. There's no confidence. None. There's no confidence. There's no confidence that Jack, Jack Higgins had at the start of the year, probably because of his concussions. Mm-hmm. You know, he's playing tentative football because of that. Yeah. Um, but Butler... No confidence. But we, put him back, we put him back to Sandy. He kicked five. Surely he got some sort of confidence. I think he form. needs to have another week there. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be rushing. I don't I don't like the fact... I, I don't like when people rush people back to the, the yeah. senior side off of one good game at VFL level. Yeah. Because you're not really fixing any problems. You've just proven that they're better than VFL level. Doesn't mean they're up to AFL level. The yeah. gap there is massive. Yeah. It's yeah. a massive gap. So there's just this... A little bit of confidence going on, like a lack of confidence going on in the Ford group, I think, because I was having a chat to the old man about it, and we both reckon that Long isn't being utilised the way he should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I reckon that his physical presence and his, his ability to fly and his ability to grab a ball, mark a ball, snap a ball, it's not on display. And for some reason, that's not on display either for Butler. It's not on display for Higgins. Hmm. What's going on? All three of them. Well, because I think it's just too many cooks in the kitchen because they're, they're all kind of expected to... All right, so from what I can gather, it's Higgins, you're the, you're the goal kicker and Butler, you're the, the pressure. Yeah. And Longy... You're everything in between, but also the one that goes down into the back line. But I think if they narrowed it down to maybe two sharing that load, yeah, it makes them a little bit more potent and a bit more clear in what they're, you know, I guess, or maybe not clear, but it, it gives a bit of a platform for them to just play a more holistic brand of football. Didn't, didn't we say this, I swear, last week, Somewhat, or we all agreed that we had too many smalls against the Lions, and we said Sharman was the man. He was the man to come in and have and create that space and to be that other tall. Well, that's it because Sharman's just clever at making leads, yeah. and it's like we try to lead, but it, we we just still got rooted in mind to no, nah, we got to go back to King, back to King, back to King, back to King. And, and I reckon that's where the play that Higgins I was talking about before, yeah. maybe that. That there was a messaging that don't be so king focused, yeah, and that it was an occasion where definitely go for him. He's by yeah, himself, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if he's on but his own. Like, no, yeah. no, 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 and then just it's like, but I don't know. And fucking memory, play oh, the bloke in the forward line. This is the it's doing my fucking head. Well, this is something that I oh, have been pissed off about. Yeah, he almost, for I, so long. He almost got his goal, and then it got taken off of him. That oh. stuffed my multi as well. Like, but do, do, do you remember the, the advantage where he'd done all this hard running and got back from the back line into the forward line to sneak down there, got to the top of the goal square by himself, got the ball, and then they called the ball back to the boundary oh, line yeah, for the yeah, free yeah. kick? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, oh, that's so stiff. But I know you're going to back him up. You're going to... Yeah, I oh, it's, am. It's, I, it's, I'm not, it's not, not memory's fault. Yeah, no, it's coach. just where he's being played. Yeah, coaches. absolutely. Yeah. He's... I think that, you know how you're talking about being king-focused and everything like that? Memory is the only one that moves. Yeah. And of course he's going to get covered and of course he's not going to play good football because no one's covering him. Hmm. No one's got memory's back at the moment. You know, he's a well, lone he's, ranger He's, he's just in the back line. But yeah. He's getting pushed to the back line. But when he comes up onto that forward line, he's the only one that can provide and lead and go hard. Yeah. Why? Why aren't multiple people doing that why isn't King moving up the ground why aren't we giving Tim Membry a spell at full forward yeah this is what you want isn't it yeah and I want Sharman yeah. in who do you think can go yeah, up the ground exactly that's exactly like, right like, if I see Higgins starting out of the goal square one more time oh, I'm going to eat my beanie he's not like, he's not he's not at all forward and he's not Stephen Mill not yet no. okay but Stephen Mill could do that he won't be he won't be don't ask him to be Stephen Mill ask him to be Jack Higgins yep you know it's like, not only is he not Stephen Milne, he's not Cody Waitman, who can fly and take a specky. He's not Toby Green. He can't, Jack Higgins can't jump. He yeah. can't get off the ground. We don't want him to, though. We don't That's want exactly him to. That's exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> we don't want him to. We want him to be the crumbing small forward, yeah. you know. Because I think there was a play where it was Ridley, I think, 
uh, I could be wrong. I don't really know that Essendon implies that well, but essentially their main backman. Mm. Higgins is on the goal square and the ball comes in. And he's... And he just gets clearly outmarked. And you're like, yeah. oh, fucking any wonder. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me at the moment. Yeah, I don't get the forward line oh. structures. No. Nah, yeah. nah. Gresh is schooling him. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll go forward for a bit. Pick and just, three. Yeah. You know, but we need him that badly in the midfield. Yeah. You know, he, he's still got a bit to work on, don't get me wrong, Gresh. But at least he's getting the ball. He's in the right spots. The only thing he lacks is a little bit of polish. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, he still had 30 disposals in kick three. You look yeah. at that in paper, you go, shit. Yeah, he still does that. You're like, that's 10 coaches' votes. Yeah. yeah. That's three votes in the brown low. Well, that's yeah. right. And Gresh didn't even get the... Ba- he didn't um, get it. Battle did. Battle got the dare and battle was good. Week. Yeah. I uh, have to say, well, just to jump in. Yeah. We haven't really talked about the back line yet. But mm. that had me a little bit worried oh, too. I was particularly, shook. I was so shook with that. Particularly our fullback. Oh, I just I don't know what he was doing on Peter Wright. Like what his game plan was on him. Um, yeah. I think there's a bit going on there, and this is where I'm worried about the boys sticking together mm. and being mates and having each other's backs because I think the back line's getting fucking sick of having 61 entries. Yeah, fair cop. I get that. I get yeah. that. But this is 10 minutes into the game. Yeah. And they're switching the ball. And I'm looking at our back line going, okay, yeah. if they get the ball, where's the ball going to go? And I'm looking at Peter Wright. He's the main target. We yeah. all know that's where the ball... It's like yeah. King the other way. That's yeah. where it's going. Yeah. That's the hot spot. Yeah. Dugues was two metres behind him every single time from the first bounce. And I'm wondering, yeah. Peter Wright's not a fast... He's not max king speed. No. He's a Ben Brown speed. It's, it seems like Dugues is like paranoid about... It just being kicked over his head and they're just taking that easy mark. Like, this was back to goal, though. Like, Peter Wright would be running. He'd go up to half forward, yeah. turn back, yeah. go back to the goal square, pointing for the ball. Dugues is still at half forward, jogging back. And I'm like, <laughs> is he expecting Battle to get in the way or yeah. Wilkie to chop out or someone else to get there? Because if that's the case, they're already preoccupied. Yeah. That's not happening, unless you've got Highmore playing. Also, King can take something from that, what you just said. Go up, Go circle up, back, he's just keep pointing, moving. He's moving around. Wright wasn't sprinting. Yeah, he was jogging, but he was always moving. moving. Yeah, but I think we get a bit spooked in when there's a bit of height in the in the, in the forward line for the other team, yeah. and mm. just by having Phillips resting there and Draper, like Draper, fuck, he did he did well when he went forward. He's a monster. He's a monster, and. Stringer, like so, Stringer had Cal Wilkie occupied all day, yeah. and that was Wilkie's worst game for the club, I, I think. Yeah. You know, and that's that's fine, but it happens. It happens but I, I think Dukes is just <laughs> trying to do too much, and forgetting just his number one. Like it goes back to what you say, Joycey, in that I think that the, the a little bit of the trust they're not backing others to do the job, mm. and when I saw. We were under the pump. Uh, saw Bradley Hill go to kick the ball in, and Dukes like, hey, 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 no, 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 I'll do it. You're like, fucking Dukes. I was oh, going to say, man. do you reckon this is one thing I was going to talk to you about when you brought up Dougal Howard saying that you're worried about him? Mm. He was captain. That's why I was more worried about it. Was, was he captain? He, he was, was captain. captain. Yeah, I don't, I, and I don't like that rotating bullshit. Like, no. <laughs> it's it's. Yeah. You know, Steele should have just said th- who he thinks would be the best leader and go, skunk, it's yours, mate, while I'm gone. See ya. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's yeah. not. Hey, boys, let's. All right, one week it's going to be you, then it's going to be you. Oh, that's going to be you, mate. Like, it, it had a bit of a, like a, a Grant prep Thomas grade captaincy, pre- you know, rotation. It's, yeah. it's like saying, it's like. Everyone gets to go. It's a participation award. Yeah. Okay, not one of you's the. Oh, you all want to be captain, don't you? Like, yeah. okay, we'll give it to all of you. Yeah. Like, are you serious? You get the captaincy. You it's get the captaincy. No, under it's not Oprah Winfrey me. show. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah, it's been under 14s, isn't it? Is, yeah. isn't it? But when he took. Yeah, so when he just waltzed in and Hill's about to kick the ball in. It, to me, that suggests a couple of things, or it, it had a, an effect on a couple of things. Where one, Hill's kicking it out a little bit quicker. Yeah, mm. he's a better kick than Dukes, and he's kicking out a little bit quicker. So maybe he's catching the bombers a little. Yeah. Just by Dukes take that gave the bombers an extra four or five seconds to yeah. set the wall. Yeah, and all he does is just bomb it long. Yeah, and it comes back again. Yeah, you know, like, all right. I don't want either of those blokes taking the kick out. Yeah, I don't want either of those blokes taking it out because you look at the win- like. I'd rather have Brad Hill at the contest, ready to cop the handball out. 
Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and have that run along the wing and get the out number out the back. So over the wall, that's how we can break down a defensive wall. But that's fine. But you look at run. every team, like Daniel Rich. Like, who would be our Daniel Rich then? That's what I was going to say. I think I want Battle taking the kickouts now. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. hammers it and it's low and hard every yeah. time. Yeah. I, I don't mind that. Yeah. And he's, I, I he's the only one that seems to have a bit of confidence about him at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, fair call. I yeah. wouldn't mind Battle kicking it in. Yeah, because uh, he doesn't really occupy any space in terms of chains when we're coming out of the back line. Yeah. So... If, if Peter Wright's up there building the wall, well, okay, let Dougal go up with him and be Peter Wright's man mm. so that ball can either go out of bounds or come to ground and we can level it and have someone yeah. like your Bradley Hill coming past and That's it. receiving the ball. And mm. then you've still got a key defender back there in battle. Yeah. So, like, mate, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense because perhaps part of Dougal's is thinking by him taking the kick in. I don't think he's taking it in thinking that I'm a really good kick. Yeah. I think he's doing that in case if it does get brought Healing back in. Up. Well, more so that if the ball does come back, mm. then he's there, not, say, Hill on whoever they've, whoever's manning the mark yeah. typically is the big, you know. Yeah. So to have battle there, that's I reckon that's a good compromise and yeah. that would work. That's that's what I'm feeling. That's, that's the vibe I'm getting is that, you know, Brendan Goddard used to be the centre-half back that would take, out, take the kick-outs, yeah. you know, and if he wasn't there, he's in the marking contest. But... Um, anyway, I want to talk about now just calling the Jets. Okay, so the teams there, St Kilda are at pa- St Kilda supporters are at panic stations right now because we're yeah. the most vulnerable team in the eight. Yeah, we yeah. are the most vulnerable team in the eight. As All Ken Corns loves to remind me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that, that was good. Oh, no. He got you. Yeah. No, nah, he hasn't got me yet. Yeah, no, yeah. We'll, we'll, it's, we'll, not we'll <laughs> it's not over game. It's not over game. Yeah, he gave you I'm the looking eyes. You, buddy. Yeah. 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 Guess what I'll give him on the weekend if we get up. Oh. I'll give him more than the looking eyes. We'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we need to put you boys in the ring like Milne and, and Boomer Harvey, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a ripper. You're going to get the hair dyed blonde as well, like they uh, did? Nah. Nah, nah. Um... But anyway, we're at panic stations as Saints fans. Okay, most vulnerable team in the eight. Mm. We're eighth. So not only does that list us as the most vulnerable team, but with our draw. Yeah. Yeah. Most vulnerable to fall out of the eight. And all the predictions are saying, you know, we'll finish ninth and everything like that. So it's business time. It is business time. It is absolutely business time at St Kilda. We've increased the training workload, you know. We've gone through a couple of changes after the bye. We've brought a, a lot of players in that weren't in. You know, Clark's come back mm. in. Billings has come back in. Um, yeah, because that was my that was my chief concern heading into this game, that this was our most unsettled lineup for the year. Well done. They're unsettled. We have to settle now as a group. We've had the look. Mm. It, it takes a while, okay? It takes a while for an average side to get that synergy back with the lineup. Hmm. This is the proof of whether we're a good side or we're an average side is whether we can flip that in a week like good sides do. Yeah. Because Melbourne, you know, I'll say last year, not this year, they have they lost three in a row this year with some different players coming and going in that lineup. So they got found out a little bit, but as soon as their players come back, you know, they'll hit their form again. And they'll probably hit their form again you know, on Thursday against Brisbane mm. could happen. It's a massive match, but they're pretty much safe in the finals. They don't have too much to worry about. They'll get their wins for the rest of the year and then they can focus on the next four weeks. So ho- hopefully these two losses have just been a deep clean. Yeah, you'd hope. To Fingers figure crossed. out, you know, what the problems are and then we can hit our straps in the next couple of weeks because, you know, that, that draw is so yeah. ominous. So, anyway, speaking of the draw, we will talk about the Sydney clash up there at the SCG on Saturday night, but not before we get stuck into some Jakey's Junk yeah, Mail. That's Ooh. it. Some therapeutic Jakey's Junk <laughs> Mail. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. We need it. Jakey's Junk Mail. Jakey's Junk Bit of shush, boys. It's Jakey's junk mail. <laughs> this one's from Josh. 
He's uh, he's gone for the old personal attack here. Oh, Joshy. Oh, I know. Marshy. At me. Oh. I know. Oh. Usually you're the fan favourite in the junk yeah, mail. Yeah, yeah, this is different. Yeah. He goes, I'm getting in early and saying this is Marshy's fault for saying we'd be up by 45 <laughs> at, this, yeah. at quarter time. I was thinking that during the game, I'm like, fuck Marshy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. It really but, yeah, me like I touched on before, I was just being silly. But you know, you can kind of hedge your bets where you just like, well, let's be let's be real. Going into that game, we should have been doing those sorts of things. But blame the players, Joshy, not me. <laughs> <laughs> if I was out there, I, I'm fucking getting that crumb that Dan Butler's got, and I'm just putting it on my boot because you know I just love snags. Yeah. So. Get me out there, Chief. I'll fucking get some girls. <laughs> uh, this one's from Michael. Hey, lads, love the pod. Keen to know your thoughts. But for me, we're massively over-indexed on role players who get a game because they chase and tackle. Every team needs this, but I don't know if we can carry Butler, Higgins, Long in the same side. For me, only one should be getting a game, and high more charm and structurally means member be- becomes a full-time forward. Yeah, which kind of what we talked about yeah. in a way. Well, rather than having three blokes that are there to create pressure. Can we have three blokes there to kick goals? Oh, that's right. Like, the high school wins. Because yeah. Rats clearly loves the three smalls. And yeah. back at Carlton, they were averaging, like, Betts, Yaron, and who's the other one? Gartlett? Jeff yeah, Gartlett? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, were, they were averaging, like, 10 goals nearly a game between yeah. them. That's what Rats sees, I think, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Get goals, boys. That's yep. what we want. Get goal hungry. We want goal players. Yeah. Not role players. Ah. Oh, has he gone there, has he? <laughs> That's <was> very good. <laughs> Thanks, Joycey. Yeah. Uh, this one's from James. Hey, boys. I think uh, this is James, your mate. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, hey, Jimmy. boys. Um, when Rat started, we had a new emphasis on recruiting players with skill. Are you worried we've overcorrected and now we don't have enough players who run hard and too many who kick well? Um, without Mackenzie and Steeler, we just didn't have the effort this weekend. Also, tell Joycey that his tunes were bloody beautiful on Saturday at the Carlton Brewhouse. <laughs> Thank yeah, you, yeah. James. I That's reckon lovely. He, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you put that one in there, didn't you? Oh, this ain't no Hayley Watson situation, <laughs> mate. <laughs> 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 he was actually there. I've met him. Oh, was I've he? met him in person. Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Whatever you yeah. say, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> our conversation uh, was sure, along the Sure, James. <laughs> I, I do like what he says there. I think that yeah. we've really focused on getting the skills right and haven't worried too much about getting physical players. Yeah. And players that are willing to actually, you know, get a game based on how hard they can hit and how hard they can tackle and whatnot. You know, just have a good spread. Mm. So, yeah. I think, yeah, I yeah. don't know. I think that answers it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's from Anthony. Um this is a joint one from he and his missus. Oh, so they've yeah, combined Very here. nice. Dynamic duo. Um, if you had to choose a movie soundtrack that best describes the Saints year so far, what would it be? Um, we've got Bohemian that's part Rhapsody one. slash Top uh, actually, Gun over there. Yeah. <laughs> funnily, enough, funnily enough, he goes, and what would you play for the boys to get them up and about on Saturday night? Oh, and Bohemian Rhapsody can't be your selection. <laughs> well, so it's danger zone for you now, hey? isn't it? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so soundtrack, like a mo- like an entire movie yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, like a movie soundtrack. Yeah. Oh. And, oh. Nah, yeah, I've got to go. Yeah, Top Gun Maverick, easy. Top Gun Maverick. You boys wouldn't understand yet. No, because no, we haven't seen it no. six times. No. Yeah. See it once <laughs> first. Come on. <laughs> well, once you pop, you can't We're going gun. in the danger zone the next four weeks, so it's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. But Top Gun's like really upbeat. They're like, shit. Yeah, oh, but it starts this, slow this. and then it builds. Yeah. Just like our season. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Right. I'm trying to think of like seminal. Yeah. I'm- I, I, I always, I always Guardians over. Guardians of the think, Galaxy. Yeah. You're gonna go for some movies that are like, you know, underdog stories, like, um, like The Blind Side or something. Oh, the Blind Side. No, <laughs> Sandra, I, we need a Sandra Bullock like, yeah. at the club. Uh, uh, I'm going, I'm going to school. I'm going, to, I'm going Footloose, right? Footloose, yeah. All right. So, yeah. have you seen Footloose, Jake? You're not allowed to dance. Uh, you're not allowed to. <laughs> That's right. I don't we, think so. You're not allowed to kick goals. <laughs> yeah, we just want to dance. Yeah. And like at the moment, dancing, yeah, dancing is kicking goals, and for some reason, the the boys just that they they don't feel like they're allowed to kick goals. I want 
they're the boys just to know that it's it's more than okay. It's implored. It's desired. Who's going to gonna be the goals. Kevin Bacon that comes in and sets us alight? Is it Jack oh. Steele? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 He's going to come in. He's going to yeah. get the electric boogaloo happening. So yeah, fuck it. I'm going footloose. Right. That's a good one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this one's from Alex. So he's got a bit of a mix. Here. He's got some positive spins and um, some down spins. So uh, a bit of a long one, but bear with me. Uh, he goes, okay, so last night wasn't great, but positive spin. And I've thought about this over the last 24 hours. Number one, we never turn up to big games, Spud's game, Maddie's match, Indigenous round in the Alice Springs, uh, which worries me in a grand final, sure. Two, we don't match up the best against the Dons in recent times. Check the past record. Three, and I think we on this chat, and I can only assume the players, have been focused on the next four weeks and assumed we chalked up the Bombers game as a win. Too complacent. Four, and go with me on this. Uh, that's what he said, not me. No <laughs> <one>. <laughs> a lot of the teams that seriously contend at the end of the year have a mid-season dip. Richmond 2017 against us. Melbourne this year, which isn't great if we play them in a grand final, as well as this year they've mm. dipped. Um, number five, a few new players coming back, including my man Hunter Clark, who will take time to warm up. Be patient. Six, if you believe what you read based on run home, Cats and Frio will be near the top of the table based on fixtures, who we have both beaten. Um, them in Brisbane, who were we were unlucky not to beat them at the Gabba, but yeah, we got injuries and whatnot. And Melbourne, who I think will fall apart given at the core they're a rabble. Stephen May, I'm not going to go into what he said about <laughs> Stephen May actually, <laughs> and slash cheese boys supporters. So he's going to be yeah. personal there. Seven teams sometimes lose games they should win. Blues on Thursday as well, and obviously Swans on the weekend like us. And eight, we need to win 15 or 16 or 22 to make finals. I don't know how he goes with 22 to make finals. Um, that means we need to win two of our next three of our games on the run home. Looking at the next six, post buy, we are oh, zero no, and one. Instead of or, it was meant to be of 22. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, if we're good enough for a flag, we'll win four of the next five. That's three of the next hard games we've got. Then West Coast. I have faith. That's yeah. what he said. Okay. So yeah. he's got a fair bit of perspective. I needed to share it because I know that not only sometimes we need perspective on mm, the show, but yeah, I think a mm. lot of listeners can, like we talked about, have hit panic stations yeah. already. I've yeah. seen comments during the week saying the season's done. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not watching anymore. I'm like, yeah. you're bloody serious. Like, we're eight and five. Like, the season's alive. Yes. It's not yeah. done. Yeah. And I, I've wondered this, and I wanted to tweet this, but I kind of stopped myself. <laughs> I wanted to tweet In case something. Kane was just around the corner doing this. <laughs> No, I wanted to I wanted to tweet something like how will the players ever believe that they can win a flag when our half more than half of our supporter base will never believe that we can win that flag. I yeah. swear half our supporter base or more yeah. will always think of something bad before they think of something good. Yeah. Which is actually not a bad percentage compared to other teams. No, but, oh, yeah. you know, but it yeah. affects I feel like it affects our playing group so much more. Yeah. Do, do you think? Do you think in the twenty but, minutes into the first quarter that players could feel the crowd sitting yeah, back on holy shit? Oh, they can feel them at the ground. But doesn't that? Like, that's what like, I mean. That's what. Yeah, we, I actually prefer us being on the road because we are away from that pressure mm. of having our fans sitting on them. You know, yeah, like the audible gasp when Butler. Just That's, did yeah. that move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. in itself was what, what about bizarre. The there were boos at I think at half time. Did you uh, hear that? Nah. There were very yeah. loud boos. I don't know if it was to the umps. It or... would have been the umps because they were shit. Yeah, as they I was like are. they wouldn't be booing oh, us. Another right? weird game of umpiring. Oh, Lee Fisher, wasn't it? Again, yeah, it was Lee Fisher. There yeah. you yeah. go. AFL, honestly. Yeah. Ex players. Uh, but I'll, I'll, doing I'll, I'll go back to what he said at the start about the marquee games yeah. and flip it into a bit of a positive. In that, yes, clubs go out to win every game, but and there's expectation. But these ones put a heightened level of expectation. That it Friday night for that game, to me, that is on par with a final. Yeah. Like that expectation, not wanting to let people down. So if anything, it, at least it builds that kind of sort of training, I suppose towards those big moments that when we do get to the finals, we, 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 we're we coming into that with a bit of preparation under the belt in this is a massive game for the club mm -hmm. and potentially doing better next time that kind of a moment arrives. 
When I heard Nathan Burke's speech before the game, I'm like, there's no way these boys aren't up and about now. Yeah, and then His Tim, speech Tim, was so good. It was, even, it, it was amazing. But then Tim Watson fucking comes back in for another two minutes. Yeah, just going, oh, yeah, and, and then just go, yeah, like he's already said his piece. Burke says his piece. Beautiful. Yeah. And then it should have just been done at that. Mm. But no, nah, Tim Watson just can't help himself. Oh, any <laughs> Essendon boys. <laughs> like, mate, this isn't SEN. Fuck off. And yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, yeah. yeah. And yeah. what Rat said pre-game as well. I mentioned that in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys like what he said post-game though? I yeah, I thought his conference. I thought his. Oh, uh, yeah. Can you, can you talk about it just for the listeners? He was. Who he was shocked. Seen it? That he was, was genuinely shocked. That was. There, there was no sugar coating it, and he 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 didn't look like a coach. He looked like a supporter. Yeah. Mm. A, a supporter with great insight and perspective about what had just happened. Mm. And I, I felt a lot better. I watched that. It was one of the last things I watched on, on Saturday. Mm. Um, mm. I watched that and I'm like, all right, he gets it. He knows. He knows what he needs to do. Mm. And he like, essentially just says like pretty much everything that you was going through your head as a supporter, mm. a balanced supporter, he verbalised that. He's like, now the players, you know... 61 inside 50s, you know, good luck winning games with that sort yeah. of number. He, yeah, he said that Battle was the only player on the ground to win his position. Yep. There he you said go. only Battle, yeah. no one else. And the players and it says yeah, everything. We're going to yeah. have a shit weekend because of it and, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and, and just the, the whole letdown of the experience and all yeah. of that. And yeah, I, I, I like hearing that from Rats. Yeah. Because if he had to came out and given us a Richo presser, like, you know, well, we won. We we equalised in clearances, and that was pleasing. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, no. Nah, he was just raw. He wasn't sugar coating it, yeah. and just said we we're really, really poor. But you, you really want to do it, Richard? Yeah, I did want to go into a bit of Richard. <laughs> yeah, look, there's some definite areas that we need to work on. I was very happy that we managed to, um, in the second half, pull back our clearance numbers and uh, really equal the uh, contested ball because that was something that was. Um, it was lack, got lacking the in, the, going. in the first half. <laughs> yeah, it's real um, um, but heads down, but bums up football. Just, yeah, heads down, bums up football. But, um, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll take that into next week. We'll take that into next week and um, we'll improve on it. But, uh, yeah, overall, not too pleasing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Saints fans. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Saints fans. <laughs> All right, this one's from Steph. St- speaking of rats, do you think Friday's effort um, and results of the next month could affect... Ratten's contract offer next month could I don't think Friday does I don't think Friday re- is a reflection of rats no nah. because but, yeah there, there's some senior boys out in that football field that need to take you know and it's such a mentally draining week yeah because like even as supporters you know just us doing our show and like just all the chat about it it's mm. a heavy subject it's you yeah. know um, and the players they were expected to they and they did a lot you know mm. you saw all the you know stuff they put out from the club. It was just a big build-up. And, and we saw it with the Bombers. And and they would have gone into this game knowing what kind of pressure we were under. Yes. Because, they were, you know, they had their 150-year yeah. and they just, you yeah. know. Didn't show up for that. Didn't yeah. show up. Yeah. So. Um, this one's from Jeff. It's actually a YouTube comment, but he said, take this into the podcast, Jake. So Wee, I'm like, okay. got to listen to Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Here. Mm-hmm. Um, he goes, we have the talent. We have the ability what we seem to be lacking is that person who can reach into their souls and get them to believe in playing for the jumper, the crest, the club, for Spud for all his memory on this day, for God's sake. This group can do almost anything, but they are lost in the woods wandering around. The path to home is just over there, but no one knows how to find it. We need that special person that can motivate to play like optimism actually exists, that person that can erase this hand-dog attitude that resembles panic more than anything else. Is rats this person... He needs to be. Fair. Fair, yeah. Fair comment. You're, you're I pretty quite much like describing that. a premiership coach. What yeah. he's saying there is what all premiership coaches do to their sides before they win one. Yeah, they're always... Mm. They're near, aren't they? They, yeah. You just can't quite see that exit. Yeah. Because, like, he, he, there was a rat and rocket at half time and the boys responded, but yeah. then just fizzled back out again. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah... I think that's pretty much it. I mean, unless you boys want me to get some free ball junk mail going, but yeah, that's, go all, free ball. that's all Why the curated not? stuff. Just, yeah, do, can, do one lucky dip. Yeah, you lucky, do dip. lucky dip. Yeah. All right, where are you, Haley? <laughs> <laughs> Very um, good. That was good. Here we go. <laughs> what do we need to do? 
Okay, here's one uh, from Laurie. What do we need to do to fix these arrogant mental lapses? I like that he's put arrogant oh, in there arrogant because arrogant mental lapses. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what we were like on Friday. I, I, it does come off as arrogance, doesn't it? But I think it's there's a lot of apathy involved too. Like, ah, uh, can't be fucked, you know. Mm. It's like, ah, oh, is it up to me? I don't want it to be up to me. Why, why can't it be up to the? That's that's fair because like the amount of time I, I can have about four or five times when we had this brilliant bit of play and it should have resulted in us having a, an inside fifty and a mm. shot on goal, but just the overuse of the handballs and mm. by the end of it we've had about four or five handball chains, and then we're just handballing it to someone who's like got their ha- hand over their head or at their feet, mm. but no one wants to be the man to send it inside 50 because they don't yeah. want to fuck it up. Yeah. So, you know, it makes the other player look shit by not being able to get on the end of a handball. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah, and, and that, that reflects arrogance and it also reflects no confidence. Yeah. Oh, that run through the midfield. I can't remember which point of the game it was. Oh, was that when we had like four players and we're all just handballing to each other? Yeah, and yeah. Just, and, and then just handball to around. the ground? And yeah, you're like, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's hot potato. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of this hot potato. Take it on yourself. And if you fuck it up, you apologise and play on. You don't yeah, even have yeah. to apologise. And you'd rather on. be turning it over deep inside our forward 50 than yeah. in, in the, in the, the centre square the and look like a dill bag. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's um, Jakey's junk mail. That's yeah, interesting Jakey's well, junk mail there. Okay. Sydney. All right. Mm. Saturday night. SCG. I'm, I'm, I'm livid. I can't watch it. Oh, what? really? I'm working gig? Saturday night. Yeah, I'm fair, gig. fair. So, where, where is it? Uh, pardon? Where's the gig? So we can I get some... packing them. Uh, yeah, listeners won't go there. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately this week, no Bentley Social because they've already had a yes, prior booking. Mm-hmm. So yep. we won't be won't be there for the Bentley Social, but it will happen against... Um, we'll do it against... Okay, okay, um, West Coast. West Coast. West Coast and maybe we'll try and chuck in the Geelong one. Depending on how we're going ladder-wise, could be a big turnout. Yeah. Top yep. four, top six clash. Absolutely. There. That was yep. a massive turnout last time. So, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. And, and good vibes everywhere. So yep. make sure you get along. Yeah. Um, and so I, be- yeah, no I believe that the, the club are doing something as well. That's so, right, like, yeah. you know, um, you can go down there and check it out. Um, yeah, RSEA yeah. Park, Saturday so, night. Yeah. Compare the pair. Compare the pair. Same mm. team, same players, same super contribution. <laughs> Jeez, that comes up once a week, Joyce. It does, Come yeah, on, yeah, Let's yeah. get rid of that shit, all right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> let's let's anyway, actually be let's unique talk about on Sydney this show. And yes, oh, first of all, yeah. they won't be, uh, they'll be without their Ruckman. Big call. Ladder, yeah, 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 yeah. Gone for a week. that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So no Ruckman there. Tom Hickey didn't play on the weekend. Is no. he playing this week? Don't know. And if he does, he's coming off being sore. So yes, yeah, exactly. Good for us now, we're playing them at the SCG, and that's a danger ground for everyone, including Sydney. Yeah, they never win there. No one's safe at the SCG. Anything can happen there. Yeah. So. I think they are most vulnerable there. Mm-hmm. Now, you say, okay, look, we might do them on height. We'll do them on height around the ground. But as soon as that ball goes into the forward line, the McCartan brothers have been doing very well this year. Mm. Yeah. Very well this year. Very well at rebounding and everything like that. They got beaten by Port Adelaide on the weekend pretty badly. So we can definitely take what Port Adelaide have done. Um and try and implement some of that, I think, but not all of it. Because Sydney will have to improve on that game as well. They'll look at what they did wrong, what they need to improve on. I didn't I didn't watch that game, so yeah. tell tell us where Sydney lost it. Or yeah. Or, did you watch or it, more Joyce? importantly, how Port won it. Or, or yeah, whatever. I think I, I think know. their forward line is the Isaac Heaney Buddy Franklin show. And if those two aren't firing then they're not getting their goals from Similar it. Similar to us, King and Higgins. Yeah, exactly right. So, um, I think that the, they haven't dealt with the likes of a, a monster up forward like Charlie Dixon. Now, he didn't have, you know, he didn't kick a bag of six or whatever like that, but he became the focal point. Mm-hmm. And he dragged a lot of attention away and Port Adelaide looked at, uh, elsewhere. Mm. Yeah, Is it Georgie Artis play? Georgiades played. He didn't play a lot forward, but Marshall, Marshall was the yeah. outlier. He would okay. kick four. He was very good. He's yeah. coming together as a bit of a footballer as that Marshall. So Port Adelaide know that. 
that came together well for them. Who's going to be that for us? Is it going to be our Marshall? It's going to be Membry. It could be Sharman. Exactly be right. And I'm feeling as if Membry will benefit from not having to run the lengths of a ground like Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. And being able to move forward and actually sneak back in forward on the rebound, getting those goals. So a few out the backs, you know, if you put the legs in, but it's just going to, it's such an interesting game. Like you look yeah. defensively against Sydney and go, okay, who do we need to take care of? I think that Lloyd. Look, Lloyd, yeah, but he's a defender. Hmm. So we took care of him last year easily. Because Jack Higgins was in form. Yep. Now, he had the game where he missed all the goals and we lost because of that. But then he had a game where he kicked all the goals and we, and won. we won because of that. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, he, he rendered Lloyd useless. So, you've just got to make your opportunity ca- uh, opportunities count against a side like Sydney. So, how do you think you can exploit Sydney the way that we did last year? Mm. Well, you need Hilly. Being able to well, that that ground suits him to a T because it's oh. it's pretty much one kick from the back line and it's a four yeah. fifty entry. Yeah, and you could almost say the same for Sinks. Nasir so, as well if he plays. And, and uh, yeah, that's right. And th- that was one of the interesting things from uh, Ratten's presser is that he, he guaranteed that Nas is playing this yeah. week. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that that ball use off the back line um, that's that's hugely critical and just don't want to stuff around in the. the the overuse of handballs, especially on a ground like that. Mm-hmm. But the overuse yeah. of handballs, you want to see hands clearing it out of the the clear, getting it out of the clearance to someone who can then kick it. Yes. Not to then, for them to handball it. Yeah. Which is what we did so often against Brisbane. So tidy a few things that, like that up. Mm-hmm. And it's it's almost the perfect ground for Steely um, to return in because he needs, we need that, that, Improvement in the midfield, and because yeah. it's such a short ground, Steely gets a one handball out. Yeah, I hope he's sinks, right though. Get oh. a, yeah. He said last week that he's right. I yeah. trust that he's right if he says he's right. Remember, yeah. he came back from a knee. Yeah, after one week. I know that um, Rats <laughs> well, yeah. in the presser yeah. he did say that he could have played against um, Essendon. Yeah, but they're like, nah, we just held it, him back. It like, would have broken the records. He would have broken the records for all the sprints and jumps and tests that he needed to do, but yeah. we didn't want to risk it. Now this is the start of our finals battle in the next yeah. four weeks. You need Steely. I want Steely to play forward. I want him to come in. To do a bit of a Paddy Cripps. Bit of a Paddy Cripps, bit of a Nat Fife. Just be that outlier forward. Mm. If we're not going to bring in your, like your Cooper Sharman, you're bringing in Steele and you're, you're utilising him. Well, He's becoming r- a utility. Because that game where he did his shoulder... Yeah. Fuck me, he did better as a small f- as a forward than yeah. with one arm than what Higgins and Butler and <laughs> Long did last week. Yeah, he reads the play. Yeah, he reads the play so well. So bring him in. I'd be starting him in the forward line, and then if we need a bit of a chop out in the centre, put him in. Chuck him in. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to see him go forward, or mm. even even play on a wing. Just free him up, and it gives the players that confidence when they look up. Steely somewhere, you know, and if mm. they don't see Steely, they'll see somewhere. It gives it encourages them to look up, you know, and see something different. Yeah, a different avenue, a different source. Mm. So, and I think that's where you can create another outlier. Geez, if Jack Steele plays forward and he comes off the ground with two, three goals, we win, mm. big time, baby. And you've got players like, um, you know, you say you want to play more forward. Windy was great on the weekend. Yeah, You'd have was, to say he's he's a yeah. definite chance of playing. Uh, I'm loving the, the fact that every time he gets sent back to the yeah, twos, he, he responds. Yeah. 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 Man of the match. That, that's such a, that's such a good trait. Yeah. yeah. So he, he's a he's a class player. Yeah, he'll come in. Yeah. Him, um, Steely. Do you think those would be the only changes? Just the two? Yeah. I know I people want so. high more. People are desperate for high more. D Mac will come in. D Mac will come in, sorry. So there's three. You're not gonna go more than four. Yeah. So it it'll be, be interesting to see who comes out. I'm guessing Butler. Butler would be one. Um, yeah. I think Higgins stays in based on his form. Winhager was already the sub. For I the think game, you leave so him as the sub. In. I you think, I think it's stiff, but leave him as the sub. Because hmm. that's a weapon. If something goes wrong, God forbid if something goes wrong, he's a weapon. Yeah, true. Because you saw how he came on. Yeah, against Geelong. Geelong. Yeah. Just beelined everything. Yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, and and chances are, if Zach Jones is he's soft tissue is not up to scratch, or if he's not up to scratch, he is on the precipice right now of being dropped. Yeah, yeah. He had fourteen uh, touches on the weekend. Uh, or something. He needs to go 16. back to stand. He, ne- he needs to go back to stand. He yeah. just learned to just get the pill again, and like he did it. But that that's a thing, like. I was so surprised he played. Yeah. In my books, if you come off with an injury, you don't play. Yeah, hamstring. Play. Yeah, yeah, hamstring. Think, and yeah. his history. Yeah. You know. That's when you play windy instead. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think they'll drop him against his old side, Sydney. Yeah, no. true. Because he'll have a point to prove. Yeah. Good way to prove it so, against your old mob. Yeah. Steely, D-Mac could be the only ones. But I think a few people will be disappointed. I'd yeah. see more. But we'll see. Yeah, yeah. The Charminator. The Charminator. That's one too. Yeah. Mm. So it'll be it, it'll be really interesting. There's a lot on the table this week yeah. after a bad loss. Absolutely, always is, always is selection wise. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if yeah JB sticks around, if Hunter Clark sticks around. Yeah, JB around. eighteen and two goals. He, he, he stays in. It's two. Clark though, I don't know. He was he a worry. A bit underdone. Yeah, yeah. So you put that down to first AFL game for the year. Yeah. If he did, yeah, I'd be surprised and very disappointed if he produced the same. Again, Again, like two weeks in a row. Yeah. That would be a worry for me, but I'm, I reckon he will be given yeah, the opportunity. Because he's had some rotten luck. Yeah. Mm. Has Hunter Clark. Got to give him yeah. a run. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's put a lot of hard work in off field. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's just going to be a very interesting game. It's going to be. It's going to be a very, very nervous watch, isn't yeah. it, boys? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Saturday night, i got to get the wine out, order some Greek in. Yeah. It's going to take the nerves. It's going to suck for me. I'm going to be standing I know, behind I don't know my how guitar you're doing singing, this. looking at the iPad. Like reading lyrics and stuff like that, my heart's gonna be. It's gonna be. What, what did Jack Higgins say? Uh, going a thousand it's, 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 beats per second. A thousand beats per second. A thousand beats per. No, a thousand. A thousand. Thousand sec- sec- uh, seconds per minute or something like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 something like that. So, it's just gonna be so tense, and I hate it because I, I have a history of missing out on what's going on in like Saint Sydney games. Mm. Yeah, and I hate it. I just hate it. So this could make or break us. Yeah. It's it's a massive game. It's Huge. the biggest game of the year, and it's exciting. It's like, yeah. it, you'd rather be in this position than down the bottom. Yeah, yeah. because you know I, I think there are some people out there saying that if we just they don't want to just scrape into the eight. If we scrape into the eight by finishing seven, eighth, whatever, yeah. that to me says that we've done a lot of good work yeah. to get there. There's a lot of good yeah. teams we would have beaten yeah. in that run. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so. You can't get a much better, you know, sort of uh, balance. Uh, uh, what's the word? I don't know. A gauge on yeah. where you're at. If we if we make finals from here, from here, that's that's massive. And look out if we do. But mm. yeah, let's just see what we can do against Sydney. Yeah, mm. got to get there first. Absolutely. Yeah. All righty, boys. Well, Marshy, do you have? Yeah, <laughs> I got a minute. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he's got to have a minute after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is this is a minute. Like. It, I, at the game, I was reminded of a pet peeve, and I haven't seen one of these for a while. But a pet peeve at the football, nothing shits me more. Like so, in our area, it's 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 all Saints. Somehow, these people have infiltrated about five Essendon, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, there was one fella just in a suit, just getting up at, right at the end of the game. Like, just, you know, razzing everyone up and just stand, you know, just waving around like a tweet. But no colours. And I'm like, in my books, you don't you don't deserve mm. the right to to try and, you know, razz opposition fans when you're, you've arrived to a game where you either don't go for them or you're too embarrassed to wear your club colours. Yeah. So I, I pulled him up on it pretty, pretty sharply that... Do you go for Collingwood? Because he's in a white and black suit. Yeah. I go, do you go for Collingwood or are you embarrassed that you go for Essendon? Yeah. And, um, yeah, like, so I was pretty happy with that call. But That's a good one. Like, am I right? Like, is yeah. that, is yeah, that yeah, like... No, you can't, you, you, gotta, you can't stir the pot unless you're wearing your colours. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'm all for, yeah, stir the pot in Band a respectful... Wagon. Yeah, in a respectful manner, go for it. If you're wearing your club gear, you can do it. Yeah. But if, if you're just a little bandwagoner... Yeah. Yeah, you're either too embarrassed or you're just there to be a shit stirrer, yeah, and yeah. neither of which I enjoy. Yeah, oh, cool. Good minute. Very <laughs> like good that minute. One. Yep. Very um, fair right. minute. That one. Well, we'll <laughs> wrap it up here. Unfortunately, a bad Spuds game, but we do finish Spuds game on a 
good note always that um, if you do need any help at any time, please call Lifeline on 131114. That's it. It's very, very important. Um, we look after ourselves here. We look after our mates. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You held up Movember there, actually, Jake, mm. on that scarf. Bit of Movember going on this year for you. Uh, I haven't. I've never done it actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see uh, with the tash. Know, actually, to be honest, I actually um, went and shaved last week, and I kept the bow for uh, Top Gun. Oh, <laughs> and I walked up to the missus, and she's on the phone. She's like, "Fucking get rid of it." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "All right, fair enough." Yeah, fair so, th- so that's the only. Yeah, like Movember's the perfect opportunity. Your excuse to to get a um, a tash. <sighs> so if Jess doesn't let you get a tash, <laughs> then November. I reckon you could raise a little bit of funds through the channel. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll get my blonde mustache going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mine doesn't blondie? come through. Mine doesn't come through. I uh, don't get black or dark facial oh, hair. Yeah, you have to grow it, but you have to dye it. I'd love to oh, see you yeah, with a BT. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. want to see you go. Go Ackermanis. Go oh, the, like yeah. red oh, sort of. Um, yeah, blue blonde hair Acker. and the dark yeah, mustache. Absolutely. You reckon? You can yeah, absolutely. Rock it. Yeah. And um, and the camera as well, Jakey boy, he's rocking, oh, yeah. the, he's rocking the Tims. Yeah. Show him off the, oh, the camera. Yeah. camera. Hello. 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 Ooh. Proud sponsor of it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, we'd be doing well. Yeah, um, yeah I reckon they uh, suit you. They're feeling you. good, mate. They're feeling yeah. good. Uh, yeah. Very nice. Got father approval there. Yeah. He's up to his sneaky game. We love yeah. it. That's it. All righty, boys. Well, big game this Saturday night against Sydney. 7.30, is it? 7.30 start? Uh, around there, yep. Yeah, around something like that. You, you can look it up yourselves. Don't be yeah, that lazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll be that lazy. Um, but can you tell us one song that you're going to be playing on Saturday night, just out of interest? One song? One, one song that you're going to be playing at, at your gig. At the gig? Mm. I, 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 I'll be I... playing like 100 What's all right? Which one do you most? Which one do you reckon is going to get the most love on the dance floor? Oh, the most love on the at, dance floor. at this at this party that you're going oh, you to. Put me on the uh, spot. Um, Angels. Robbie Williams yeah. goes off. <laughs> yeah. All right, boys. Take care. Up the same. Thanks, TV Pod. Out.